I can remember after we first moved here that I was listening to some uh, older Remnant Fellowship tapes, and these were back when they were cassette tapes. And uh, this was back when still meeting at the Way Down Building on Seaboard Lane. And uh, I can remember David Martin giving a testimony. And as part of his testimony, he said, because of this message, I have given my life completely over to God. And when I heard that, I thought that, that, that puts it in a nutshell. That sums it up very well. Because of this teaching that God has given, that God has allowed, that God has blessed us with, that someone has been faithful to deliver, my life has been completely given over to God. I don't hold anything back anymore uh, from him. I understand what it means now to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And uh, I lived many years before I heard this message, uh, coming up on 11 years now. And uh, I did not, I went to church, but I did not have a relationship with God. Now, he, he was trying to have one with me, but I didn't know how to have one back with him. I didn't know how to treat him as my heavenly father. I didn't know how to love him by obeying. I didn't. I, I attended church, like when I was talking about just a few minutes ago. I attended church but I was dead on the inside, dead man's bones. That's what Jesus talks about, that, you know, that he got so upset with the Pharisees about, is they were hypocrites, that they looked all great on the outside, and they were saying all the right things. Matter of fact, Jesus would tell his followers, do what they say, but don't do what they do, because they are wrong. And, and so I would look okay on the outside, even though you know, I, I weighed quite a bit more than I do now, 60 pounds, but that was, you know, the outward sign of the inward change. But I was listening, but th th there was nothing for me. I mean, I was hearing, but I wasn't applying anything because I wasn't being taught to apply anything. And uh, when I heard this teaching, when I heard the truth, um, I can honestly say that God has used Gwen to change my life. He, he has used her to do that. She's been faithful to carry it out. And because of that, I understand now what Jesus says is that if you love you'll obey. And that's the only thing that I understand as a man that I can give back to God because he's got everything. He has everything. God is everything. He has everything, and I clearly understand that now. And what I can give to him is my obedience, is my loyalty, is my devotion, is my dedication, is my commitment, is my all. And that's exactly what I've been taught to do. And when I apply this teaching, that is... The revelation, you know, as Gwen has said, applying the teaching of Jesus is the revelation. When I listen and I apply it into my life, then I do have a true relationship with God. And that relationship with God is exactly like a godly father is to their child on earth. Exactly. I mean, he, he speaks to me every day because I want to hear. I, I pray. I pray every day. I read the Bible every day or a, a teaching that Gwen has every day, every day. And, and because of that, you know, Gwen has always said, you know, how, how did you think about it for those of us who are married? What did you do when, as, as a, us that were men, what did you do to court your wife? Well, you spent time with her. You found out what was important to her. You found out what she loved. You, you found out what you enjoy doing together. And that's exactly what I do now. As I find out, it says in the word, find out what pleases God and do it. And that's what I do. I find out what pleases him and I do it. And what pleases him is to live a godly life through Christ Jesus, to honor his son who would die before he would disobey by that. And then also be, be beyond all that, then I am charged as a father, which I have four children, wide range of age, and now a son-in-law as of July 30th, that uh, I, I am charged then to pass down to them what I've learned. Now, if, if I don't have a relationship with God and, and I'm not filling up on what he is, then I've got nothing to pass down. And all I can do is pass down stuff like sports or hunting or fishing or things that when I go to stand before God and give an account of my life, they're going to burn. They're going to mean nothing. They're, they're going to not have gotten me one step closer to heaven than anything else in this world. 
And so now I know that I have a responsibility, a big one, as a father to live a godly life, just as Gwen was saying, looking in these days of all, looking in, changing what I need to change, and then living it out so then my children and my wife can see my relationship with God, and it's something for them to follow, not in a prideful way, but so I don't have to lead them down the wrong way. So I've got something to give them. It's the only thing that matters. It's eternity. It's life. And, uh, you know, just a, a cool thing is that I still get answer prayers all the time, all the time. I'm praying all the time just about things, every area of life. And, uh, of course, men, you know, those of us who work, um, you know, I, I had, I was sharing with Regina earlier, I had an answer prayer just today where, you know, I was praying something specific for my job, and within a few hours, God answered that prayer. He's very personal. He's very personal. And if you take the time to get to know him and spend the relationship with him, he will make himself real to you. And it, I can't explain it. <laughs> it's one of those things you have to experience. Like you've always said, it's an experiential faith. It is. You have to experience it. But you have to take God at his word. And I listen to what is being taught because I believe that they're inspired. I know that they're inspired. I don't just believe it. I know they are. And so I follow it. My life is blessed. Not that I'm looking for the blessings because I came from a life where that's what I did. I'm not looking for those anymore, but it just happens, you know? It, it's, it's a byproduct of being one of God's children, is that he does want to bless, but he looks for that obedience first. And so I have a relationship with God. I love God with, with everything I've got. Uh, I want to be around people who do the same, and uh, so I'm very thankful that I have the life that I have now, that I have something to pass on to my children, and I'm very thankful that uh, I attend church here and sit under this teacher. I will have to say that any kind of family devotional Bible study time has to start with the father getting it right. So, that it has to start with me. In my family, it has to start with me. And if you are a man here and you're married and you have children, or if you're just married only, or if you're engaged to be married, or you're an older uh, youth and there's young ones behind you, you have to get it right. You owe it to those who are with you, who live with you, who look to you for not just um, taking care of them physically, but much more important, taking care of them spiritually. Of course, if you take care of your family spiritually, then the, you'll want to take care of them physically as well, so that, you know, hopefully uh, that goes hand in hand, of course. But it starts with me in my house. I have got to make sure that God is the first thing that is on my mind in the morning. It's the last thing when I go to bed. I think about God and the day that I had with him. And the first thing I wake up in the morning is I'm thinking about God. And for, for me, um, you know, not to be structured or rigid, but what works for me is that I will always read my Bible in the morning, always. And the reason I do that is so then I can think about what I've read throughout the rest of the day. I can meditate on it, and I'm always thinking about it constantly thinking about it. You know, Ted was just talking about constant encouragement. I'm constantly thinking about what I've read. And I have to, and, and Gwen has talked about this, you, as the head of the household, as the man, you have got to stay filled up so then you can help others. Because if you don't know what the Word of God says, how are you going to then pass it down to your children? If you haven't read the Bible, how can you tell them what to do? If, you know, Psalm 119, how can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. How can you live according to the word if you don't even know what it says? I mean, it's silly, for real. And you can't, as much inspired teaching as we have here that we are blessed with and that we all know that we are totally without excuse because it's been made very plain to every single one of us, no matter what your age is, it's been made very plain what the truth is and what God expects, then it's up to us 
to, to read the Bible, as Gwen has always taught, to have a personal relationship with God. It is up to each individual in here. And now, men, you've got to do it. I mean, there, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no excuses. You have to do it. So I can teach my three young you know, boys, my young men, Joshua's 18, he's not young necessarily anymore, but Philip and Levi, uh, to be pure so, because I've got the word in my heart. As King David said, he hid it in his heart so it wouldn't go away from him. Jesus said, you know, when, when the, he was being tempted by the devil, that, that man lives on not bread, uh, bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. And he said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. So you've got to know. You've got to know. You've got to know what's in the word. You've got to read the word. You just have to do it. There, there's, no, there's no, like I said, if, ands, or buts. So it starts with me getting it right. Then from, from there, like I said, then I can help my family. I can lead them into conversation, discussions. Form may look a little bit different. A few years ago, we would wake up each morning when, when everyone, you know, could at the same time meet together. And, and before we got going with our day, we'd have a family devotional time. The, the form of that has changed a little bit as we, you know, have different job assignments maybe. Josh was going now to uh, high school, so he gets up and gets going a lot earlier than his brothers. Jacqueline now is married to Wes, and, and so, you know, she's not there anymore. But the thing is, is that I, Joshua does not never leave in the morning without me praying with him. We talk about what he's reading because I have... Um, gently insisted that he read the Bible uh, every day, and he does that. And so we talk about what he's reading. Uh, another key uh, thing of this is Regina, my wife, uh, and wives, you have to be unified with your husbands when it comes time to this, because now then Regina is able to uh, back up. We know what we're reading. She's reading with the little boys as she homeschools them. And so Regina and I are on the same page. We're on the same page spiritually. Uh, the same things are important to us, and that is growth in a relationship with God. And so you read the Bible, you pray, and then you definitely supplement what you're reading with what you're taught here. And, and Ted just talked about that in the evangelism. We have, you guys, we have years, years and years and years and years. Um, and I would venture to say in those years of teaching, if you combine... Uh, all the way down teachings that have been going for years and the remnant fellowship uh, services that have gone on for years and including all the festivals that we have, we have thousands of lessons that we can listen to and, and they're all about developing a closer relationship with God, loving him more. That, that's what it's about. Laying down yourself so you and in turn can die to your will and show others how to do the same thing. So um, it's very important for uh, Regina and I to be on the same page, and we are. And, and I know that we also, uh, you know, with the, the younger boys, she, they'll watch Zion kids. Uh, they'll, they'll watch the last Exodus. Uh, we'll, we'll look, read through the treasure book sometimes at things. So in other words, what I'm, what I'm saying is the form maybe will change from time to time, but the function has never changed, and it is a closer relationship with God because that is the only thing in the end that's going to matter. That's the only thing in the end that's going to matter. It won't be you standing up there when, when we all have to give an account for our life, and you, it's not going to be anybody else. It's just going to be you. And, uh, you know, that right there, that, that in itself is enough to keep me motivated to do the right thing. It's enough to keep me motivated to read the Bible to understand what it says, to put it into practice, to listen to what is being taught here. And, you know, that, that's one thing that is a, like a non-negotiable ever is with, when, when these doors are open for an assembly time, unless it's unavoidable, like traveling out of town, you're sick or whatever, we are here. I mean, it is, it is a, such a big priority because God speaks through what we're taught. He just does. And so men starts with you, that's that you've got to do it. You've got to fill up 
on the Word. If you're constantly filling up on other things, like, you know, uh, sports stuff all the time, or outdoor stuff all the time, or, you know, knowing technology stuff all the time. And you know what? I'm not, you know, I'm not saying any of that in and of itself is bad at all because we need all the gifts. Obviously, look what's been done here. And it's unbelievable. And, you know, I was mentioned to someone earlier, I was like, man, I'm, I'm glad that salvation doesn't depend on me being a carpenter or technology guy because I get left out. I mean, I, I, I can't do any of that. But the, there are people who can. However, if that thing is above God in their life and they're not leading their family and they're not taking care of their spiritual health, then it's of not. Because Jesus even said, you know, when, when, when people come to him and say, hey, you know, didn't we do this in your name? Now, I'm paraphrasing, of course. Didn't, didn't we serve this and didn't we do that? And he's going to say, away from me, I never knew you. You didn't do the will. So, men, you've got to get it right. Starts here. You fill up so then you can pour out and help others out. Uh, you know, I've got to know the Bible well enough when my two 8 and 10-year-old sons you know, Levi and Philip, when they ask me, what does that mean? That I have to know. I have to have known it well enough that I can tell them. And then uh, wives, you know, if you're married in here or if God's preparing you to be married, please make sure that your spiritual life with your husband, with your significant other is of the utmost importance so you guys can be on the same page. So you're actually walking it and talking it and, you know, not sitting there saying, hey, do what I say, but not what I do. That is what angered Jesus. So he was furious with the Pharisees about that because they were hypocrites. And, and because, and, but he would sit there and say, that's fine. Do what they say, but don't do what they do because they'll say something and do something else. So we've got to do it. We've got to show them a life that's real. And this is more real than anything else. And we have to make sure we're constantly encouraging, pointing them on the right path. And that is with us filling up first and then passing on down the generation, the next generation, and so on. So they can see that you keep yourself pure by obeying God's word. So that, that, that was it in a nutshell. I'd be happy to talk with anybody who wants to about, you know, what it looks like on a day-in, day-out basis. But it's, like I said, God is everything, and we're constantly uh, pointing each other that way and encouraging one another that way.